So uh, let's do a quick demo of Opal. So what we're going to show you is how to run an example config with a single command uh, that uh, essentially uh, pushes a role-based access control policy into Opal's cache. And then we're going to show you how to uh, apply GitOps and push a policy change uh, through Git, and also how to apply a data update through Opal CLI. So uh, the, first, the first thing you want to see is go to uh, Opal's uh, Git repository on GitHub. And uh, what I'm going to run basically is one of the Docker configs. So we have it under Docker. And you can see we basically have a bunch of Docker examples how to run uh, Opal. And each one of them, you can just download and do a Docker compose app, and it's running, nothing else. Uh, but if you, are, uh, if you want a single command for that, you can just go down. And then uh, we have the TLDR. So that, that's basically just copy the command. Uh, and now let me just uh, minimize the full screen here. Um, yeah. And let's go and just uh, copy that command, copy paste, and uh, OPA will be running. Uh, mm -hmm. So what all the config does basically is uh, running both uh, a single uh, Opal server, a single Opal client, and the Opal client is running Opal for us. So everything is up and we can see that Opal pushed uh, the example policy through Opal. We can see all the stuff that coming back from uh, Opal's cache, basically, and, and uh, all the responses that Opal gives. Uh, and if you want to take a sneak peek, the policy is under, uh, a, a different repo on Permit.io, Permit.io Opal Example Policy repo. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a role-based access control uh, policy. So it has a few rules, like uh, if the user is admin, you can do everything, uh, but also just check the user role and uh, that's basically it. And it has a special flair uh, where it checks that the user is inside the US. We have actually check uh, the location of the user. Uh, and that's cool for later when we'll push a a, a data update and see that what happens when the IP of the user is changing. So, so just to maybe clarify, mm -hmm. so you ran Opal now and mm -hmm. you gave it the Git repository here, this example Git repository to track. Yeah. So it automatically downloaded this policy directly from the Git repository into the Opal instance that it's running within yeah. that Docker Compose. Yeah. So we have Opal server, Opal client with Opal. Yeah. The both the Opal client and server started. The Opal server went to Git. So, uh, track the Git repository there, and then instructed the Opal client to uh, with that policy, which was loaded directly into Opal. Sure, and uh, as as you said, Opal tracks uh, this uh, Git repository, and if I like push a new commit, Opal will track it and will just push the changes to Opal instantaneously. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, uh, that's basically GitOps for you. Uh, so let's go back to the demo. So we saw that Oppo is running. We can go really quickly to Postman. Uh, I'm losing the screen here. Yeah, and uh, if we send uh, our query to Oppo's API on port 8181, we can see that the policy is in Oppo's cache. We can see that it has all the roles it needs. And also for the users, you can see each user has an IP. So uh, that's basically Oppo is running and Oppo is everything in the cache. So now, now let's try to do a data update. So how to do that? So Opal has, uh, I'm sorry, too many screens here. Uh, Opal has a REST API uh, that, you can, uh, that you can use. And uh, I'm currently at the Opal servers uh, hosted right now on port uh, 7002. And I'm looking at its uh, open API config and I can see that it has a published data update event endpoint basically, mm -hmm. and we can use that endpoint to push a data update to Opal, but I'm gonna take a shortcut and I'm gonna use Opal CLI uh, to push that same update that I want to do. So I'm going here in a new shell mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, basically have a new Python environment and uh, activate that environment and install the uh, Opal CLI. Uh, so let's give it a go here. Uh, and so we'll install the CLI. As we said before, you can do it directly through the API. You can do it with the CLI as you're showing here. And you can also do it directly from Kafka or Redis or your Postgres this notify. Um, there are multiple ways to trigger updates just to have it work with your kind of infrastructure that you want. Yeah. And there, oh, and within our uh, Git repository, there, there's under docs, there's an how to section with uh, instructions on how to do all of those examples that I mentioned. We won't go into them now in the demo, but you can definitely uh, find the documentation and you can also 
uh, go into Slack later and ask us specifically on that or look at questions of people already asking. Yeah. So uh, I'm going now to ask uh, Opa uh, uh, an authorization query, basically. And I'm going to ask uh, if Bob is allowed to read uh, an object of type finance. So uh, I'm going to ask, and uh, it says true. Basically, Bob has a role, and Bob is located on in the US. We can see here in the policy that Bob's location is in the US. So uh, let's go back, run it again. It says, yeah, Bob is allowed. So now I'm going to push uh, a data update through Opal CLI. I'm going to copy that command. So what I'm doing here is basically pushing a data update that says, uh, uh, hey, uh, Opal, take these, uh, this policy source, this data source, I'm sorry, uh, which is uh, an IP uh, API, IP to location API that says, uh, give it that IP's uh, uh, location data, okay, and push it through the policy data channel. Uh, we mentioned Opal works basically with PubSub topics and uh, put it in Opus cache under users Bob location. So maybe just to clarify, so we're using an external service here called country.is we are not related to it. Yeah, let, let's, service, let's hope it works now, right? Yeah. Let's hope it's up. Yeah, but it's an external <laughs> service. It just provides an HTTP API, and we just connect it to fetch data from it with a data fetcher with the default HTTP data fetcher in this case. Yeah, I, I could uh, just as much go to Stripe's API as long as I provide the correct URL and all the headers for authorization that I might, might need, like API key and stuff. So uh, let's run this command. So what we see here, is uh opal is processing and maybe oh yeah it's uh published successfully and now we see that opal immediately uh is activated and we can see that we push this data update and opal server pushed it to opal client and opal client received the notification of the update went to bring that data and uh fetched it and put it under the policy so now i'm going to go back to postman and I'm going to ask the same question again, is Bob allowed to read finance? And the answer is no, because now if I go and see the data here, I'm going to see that now Bob's location is on another IP. And because we uh, used country IS, we can see that the location is now Sweden. I think it's Sweden, SE. So uh, basically, I think it's Sweden. Uh, so the next step would be to push a policy update uh, through Opal. And let's do it with Git. So I'm currently uh, pulled with the Opal example policy repo you just uh, saw. And I'm going to open my editor and I'm going to add a rule that um, says, Bob is allowed to do everything. If the input user is Bob, just allow, right? Like it's now he's like a super user. It's like a super user basically. So I just uh, created this rule and um, let's make sure that, um, sorry, let's, Make sure again, just uh, to be clear, that Bob is not allowed to do what he wants. So no, Bob is denied. But now I'm going to push that change. So I'm going to do um, it. So yeah, I'm pushing that change. Let's do We're Git. We're just pushing add. the change to Git. Yeah, so Git add the file, Git commit, Git push. Um, I'm pushing the change. And uh, let's give Opal some time. Uh, now is a good time to show you that uh, Opal has two ways to track Git repository. One is through polling. So I can just say a polling interval and uh, uh, Opal will just uh, poll that change. So now Opal detected that it has a new commit and pushed the change and the Opal client download the new policy and everything is uh, synced. The other way is using a webhook and we already support GitHub for that. So you can set up GitHub to uh, call an Opal webhook and in real time, no need for polling, you can push that policy notification change uh, from GitHub to uh, Opal and Opal will uh, instantaneously update uh, Opal client and then Opa with the change. So, and we already got to the new polling session and now we can see that there's no new commits now, but we had it previously. So now that the commit is, uh, uh, is updated, the policy is uh, changed. changed. And uh, let's go back to Postman and try again. So right now, even though Bob location is not in the US, so we can see, see the data is not changed. Still SE, Bob is allowed because Bob is allowed to do basically anything. Whatever he wants. Yeah. If it's so, Bob, I just, whatever you want, Bob, always. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> definitely. So that's basically how to push 
uh, uh, policy update just by uh, using GitOps. And Opal empower, empowers you to use GitOps to apply policy changes because you can then use uh, pull requests and uh, testing and any code signals that you want uh, and code reviews to make sure nobody pushes uh, a bad policy change that might affect your um, you need data. You just doing basic versioning, just yeah. tracking what versions of your Opal code you have and without having to work with those intermediate kind of uh, bundle servers in between, I think is uh, is really, it just speeds the process up, makes it easier to work with. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that was a quick demo and we are available it. for <laughs> questions.